So the, the plan, as much as there is a plan, is to walk in the direction of Welland Garden City and Hatfield from Waltham Cross. But I've looked at the map quite a few times and still haven't really found a definitive route. There's so many places I think, oh, we'd like to go there, I'd like to go there. So a bit of a, a, bit of a magical mystery tour. Who knows where I'll end up? I mean, I don't really want to go through Waltham Cross Town Centre, but it looks like I've got no choice. And it also looks like I'm going to see the, uh, the monument that makes this place famous. So this is the Eleanor Cross. It gives the town its name and, and its fame. It's uh, one of the resting places where the body of Eleanor of Castile, wife of Edward I, was rested on its way from Lincoln to Westminster. I think it was 1290, I believe. Of course, Edward I is best known as Edward Longshanks, Hammer of the Scots. One of the more colourful characters in English history. I've just spent far too long in Waltham Cross Town Centre. I need to push on. So this is the A10, the modern road built on the Roman Watling Street and we will cross the old Roman Watling Street, uh, not far away actually, it runs more or less parallel. If you remember uh, back in February I walked along a section of it that runs through Woodland to the north of here. footpath with a badger symbol. I'm not sure what that symbolises. It could be the Hertfordshire Way, I think. That's just a guess though. And the obligatory private property sign. A real hallmark of the uh, English countryside. So this is the terrain for the first part of the day. We are here at the moment, so we're about to go around Theobald's Park Farm, then to the New River, and then Temple Bar, and then broadly, I just want to walk up here, which is very vague, and then, if there's time, cross over onto a brand new OS map, which is always an exciting moment picking up a brand new OS map. I got it in Westfield this morning before jumping on the train. So, um, yeah, and look, there's the Roman road, so we'll see that in a minute. The other side of the new river. Well, it's taken me exactly an hour to get from Waltham Cross Station to here, which is just the other side of the town centre. Straight away, there's a little bit of a contradiction in the OS app. So there's no map reading skills involved here. The app tells me exactly where I am. It says there should be a footpath running diagonally across this field of potatoes. As you can see, there is no path. So I'm going to have to go around the edge of the field. Wow, this is like a... A sculpture by Christo, isn't it? With this fabric billowing in the wind. And here we have the new river trundling alongside the potato field. This is another stretch that I've not been along before. I stand corrected. They're beans, not potatoes. I should know that. I've grown runner beans as well. My, my dad always grew runner beans. So I should recognise a runner bean plant when I see one, but clearly not. The gentleman cutting the grass along the uh, new river told me. So that guy there, he cuts the grass along the riverbank here of the new river. And he reckons today he might get as far as Tottenham or Finsbury Park. So he walks up and down the New River, strimming the grass. Hard work. But he's done a marvellous job. Uh, 
my last few walks have been quite urban and uh, I feel the need to get out to the countryside a little bit and out into the suburbs. Approaching midsummer now, so you've got the long days. I love this. So we're now entering the uh, Theobald's estate. It's now part of a De Vere hotel chain. But the, uh, the old house and estate, I think, dates back to the 16th century. Although I think it's one of those things where it's been demolished and rebuilt and Lord knows what. This is the site where Temple Bar from the City of London was moved to, I think it was in the 1870s or 1880s. I should say on that plaque, but I don't think it does. Yes, it does. 1888. Um, and then it was returned to its rightful position. Well, not quite actually, near its rightful position in 2004, which is now it's the entrance to um, Paternoster Square. It used to sit on Fleet Street, Ludgate Hill, Fleet Street. And. Um, it's the old, one of the historic entrances to the city of London. It's very strange, it was a strange period of its life when it was here. Just check the paper Ordnance Survey map. And this road I've been walking along here, Berry Green Road, appears to be the uh, continuation of the old Roman Ermine Street. Which is interesting, it still survives as this little lane. And then connects with that stretch further up, just the other side of Wormley that I walked back in February in the snow. What was that, three months ago? So I'm just going to take this little footpath here that leads off Berry Green Road through an area which I think is called Broom Hills towards Broadfield Farm. This is the first big sort of um, decision point of the day. I could have turned south there along Theobald's Lane, gone around the edge of Theobald's Park, taken a different route and gone more directly uh, west but I've decided to uh, turn north and um, a few people commented after that last video I made where I walked up to Hartford through Wormley across sort of Hartford Heath and they indicated that this area sort of to the west of where I walked that day is well worth a look so I'm going to try and sort of head broadly in that direction like I say I don't really have a plan actually So according to all my calculations, the footpath should run through this field here, but it's all fenced off with barbed wire. I actually climbed up this field here, realised I was going south, and I know I could go round and pick up the path on the other side. I did want to stick to the path that ran through that wood along the brook, and I checked my phone, the Ordnance Survey app, I checked the paper map, I went back crisscrossed the little brook, went up to the bigger stream, tried every possible way and it's clear that they've blocked that in. I think it's a classic example of someone who's bought a couple of horses, stuck them in a field and blocked it off. I mean it's not a very big path, so it's the sort of thing they can probably get away with. I mean this is one of the things you have to deal with when you walk in the countryside on the edge of London. In London's countryside you get these kind of negated footpaths and having to walk around in circles a little bit. I'm kind of used to it. It's a bit annoying, but it's just nice to be out here. I mean, what do I care really if I have to go an extra half a mile? Oh, I just had the living daylight scared out of me walking through this long grass and suddenly a pheasant just went up poof, from right underneath my feet. And they make a hell of a noise when they come up. My God, I jumped out of my skin. Here we have the footpath, one running north-south and one running east-west. So I have another decision to make. Can I just say a massive thank you to the people who recommended the Ordnance Survey app. I think it was on that video where I got lost in the dark and Epping Forest and a couple of people, I think Philip 
was one and there are a couple of others that said, use the Ordnance Survey app, it's great. Ah oh, man, I tell you what, I would have been going completely the wrong way today if it wasn't for this. And on various other walks as well, I've become quite dependent on it. So thank you very much. The wisdom of crowds and all that. skirts around the edge of this farm, I think it's called Broadfield Farm. It's not particularly uh, sunny today, but I tell you what, it's bloody humid. It reminds me of jungle trekking in Borneo. I mean, that was really humid, <laughs> but this is still relatively humid. We've got such wonderful countryside just on the northern fringe of London. In fact, really all around the edge of London, you've got beautiful countryside right there. And you come out here and there's nobody around. Everybody's at Westfield. And this is called Barrow Lane. And uh, as I'm sure many of you will know, a barrow is another word for a burial mound. So I'm not entirely sure which burial mound it is. It's worth checking the map. I didn't notice any, but you know, I've just been looking at the maps and I'm now nearer decided where I'm going to end up. It's a toss up between Hatfield and Welling Garden City, or I could end up back at Hartford actually. But for now, I'm going to go down Silver Street. It's all good, that's the problem. It's all good stuff. I still don't know which way to go, so I think I'm gonna sit down, have something to eat, and think about it. Bag of classic rhubarb and custard sweets from the post office here in Goffs Oak. That'll keep me going. This is my actual lunch. Some TFC and Walton Cross, some salami in here, some pretzels that have now been turned to dust in my bag, and this bit of bread. So I think I'm going to follow the Hertfordshire Way up to Wormley Wood. Take it a step at a time. Still lots of uh, different routes I can take. So it's three o'clock. It's night about eleven this morning. And I've done 11.2 miles for that in four hours. So just under three miles an hour, really. Seven horses just went past me then. <laughs> Seven of them. Here we are. Wormley Wood. I realised the other day that my walks have got longer as I kind of entered middle age. I think there is a correlation and also I've noticed this urge to kind of push out of London. I suppose that's a natural progression. I'm just following my instincts really these days. I'm just enjoying it as it comes really. You know, your life is today. This is it now. Enjoy it. stone or a boundary stone here in the middle of Wormley Wood. I've looked online and I can't find uh, any reference to it. 
this really is a, a beautiful tract of woodland, ancient woodland. Lovely little stream. I think it's the Wormley Brook. It feels as though something should be living under there. I don't know what really, it's a bit damp, isn't it? A bit damp for Yoda. Trolls, not bridge enough like for a troll, is it? I don't know really. A gnome or an elf? Something. <laughs> So that white post right there is a coal post. And if you look back at the video I made on the walk along Ermine Street, there was one at the level crossing at Hoddesdon. So it's the point at which the coal tax of coal being brought into the city of London, that's the point at which that tax should be levied from. Sort of the boundary mark of the area covered by that coal tax, which I think is from the 1860s, I believe, from memory. So I'm here, about to go to White Stubbs Lane, which is another decision point. I'm going to head up this way, I think. White Stubbs Lane. Already the amount of traffic that's passed me uh, is making me think about getting back into the woods. So I've got to look for a way off this road. Wow, look at that deep gorge. Oh my god! Dog just reared past me. What? All right. A deep gorge with a little brook running through it. Very dramatic landscape. The dog made short work of it. I did somehow drift a lot further east than I thought. I thought I was following the only footpath through the wood that would have brought me out on the other edge of Wormley Wood. Somehow I ended up near a place called I think Bancroft Wood or Bancroft Wood. So I don't know how I did that. That often happens. I don't know what point I missed the uh, the main path that's marked on the OS map. But there you go. So I've got to walk, try and find my way west through the wood rather than on the road. So this is where I'm going, you see the white patch there? I've got to work my way around the edge of that white patch and now I'm in Old Grove. And here it is. And now I've got to turn back and head north, back towards White Stubbs Lane. And then onwards. Look at this, this is fairly dramatic. Down quite a steep set of steps and then up the far side. <laughs> Fantastic. 15 miles into a walk, you're not exactly looking for a, a steep set of muddy steps. But that's what we've got here. Back along White Stubbs Lane. But at least there's actually a grass verge to walk along at this section. Thank God for this footpath. Those cars just seem to accelerate when they pass you rather than slow down. Now there's something special poking up out of this field here. Just off White Stubbs Lane, there's a clue for you. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you a couple of seconds. It's the air shaft for a railway tunnel which is running beneath the ground here. I was hoping I'd be able to see it, and there it is, it's marvellous. I had a whoop of joy when I saw it. What a magnificent thing. I think I'm getting my second wind, which would be great because I've done, I've done over 15 miles 
I don't know how far I've, <laughs> I've got to go. I still don't really know. I think it might be a little bit ambitious to try and get to Hatfield or Welling Garden City. I think I might end up at Hartford, but even Hartford's a few miles away. So I could even have, I don't know, I've got at least five miles to go to get to a train station, possibly more. So good, four hours till sunset, so loads of time. This is quite a severe notice that uh, it's not dedicated as a highway, a defined footpath. They've got their own footpath post for the golf course. I don't think I've seen that before. Caution, golf balls in flight. Well, they would be if I was playing, you wouldn't be safe wherever you were. Actually, these posts are bloody useful because it's really easy to get lost on a golf course. I've done that a few times actually. <laughs> So decision point, I am at Bayford Station, if you see that there, it's the pink dot, it's flight when near the moat, Bayford. Now it's about four and a half miles to Hartford, I haven't covered any of this area here before, or it's a bit further, it's about six miles to Wellham Green, which is over here, about eight miles to Hatfield. And about nine miles to Welling Garden City. It's um, half past five and I've done 16 and a half miles. So if I go to, so I'm going to walk up to Bayford Village here and that's the real decision point. That's where I've decided whether to turn north or keep pushing west. And also, where West as well. Apparently, there's been a church here since 1222. I don't know the date of that actual building, but some of it may well date from the 13th century. Oh my god, all the sheep are rushing over. Okay, I'll leave you alone. Bye bye. I think they're protecting their lambs. So, my decision I'm going to head west. I still don't know exactly where I'll end up somewhere between sort of Hatfield and Welling Garden City. Six o'clock now. So I'll be hopefully walking into a really beautiful sunset. So Little Berkhamsted's that way. Water Hall and Bayford. I thought I'd made my mind up, but now I've got to have another moment of indecision. Little Berkhamsted could be quite nice. No, water hall, I think. This way. Well, this is quite an astonishing view. Just the other side of Bayford Green, look at that. I'm sort of looking north. This is uh, looking towards the outer limits of the Lee Valley up there, the far side. Stunning. After all that deliberation, about where, which way to go, where to, where to end up, I don't care now. <laughs> this is just so beautiful. I've had it all today, haven't I? I've had a bit of urban stuff at the beginning, a wolf and cross, some glorious woodland, and now field paths. 
more can you ask for? There's a couple of metal detectorists working this scrubby field here. It's um, marked on the map as either being disused pits or it's got bunkers marked here as well. There's an observatory not far away. It's quite funny. Um, where I've crossed off of one OS map, I couldn't find my way on the, on the, on the next one. And so I ended up going around a bit of a circle. So I've ended up further east than I would want to be, where I thought I was going to be. It's been a bit of a theme of today. That was so beautiful, I don't think it. I really uh, hate this type of road walking, these country lanes with no footpath and nowhere to get off the road. You can't get into the farmer's field. And mate, the people drive along here like it's a racetrack. This is the quietest it's been since I've been making this video. How long is that? 20 seconds. And here comes the next car around the corner any minute. So I'm so desperate to get off that road. I'm going to try. <laughs> I've ducked down here into a stream bed, so I'm literally walking in a ditch. There's very thick sting in to my left. So I'm going to see if I can walk along here, and then I will have to bushwhack through some sting into that field. This is crazy, but so is walking along that road. I think I can do this. Well, Come out of that bush, look at the stinging that I was going to have to contend with, but I think I should be alright up here. Thank god there's no water in it. Still brambles and stinging that I'm stung and scratched and all. When I did it, <laughs> I'm a bit sore, a bit scrapped, but you know, in one piece. And that, as he walks down through the thistles, and that's the reason I wear long trousers when I walk. I usually bring a stick with me on these kind of walks, but they've been bloody handy back there. <laughs> of course, none of this would be a problem if I could fucking map read. <laughs> it's all part of the fun, eh? What, about an hour and a half into sunset? Quarter past seven. It's been a really long, lovely walk. This field was absolutely full of rabbits, by the way. They're too quick for my camera, but they were hopping around in front of me all the way across this glorious field that saved me from that death road. I think I would always love this field, the one leading up to Waterhall Farm, and now reconnecting with the footpath that I thought I was going to be on. So here it is, the Sacred River Lee. its way down towards the Thames, running back down through Leighton, very far away from my house, quite some miles away. So, 22 miles now. I don't think I'm even vaguely close to Welling Garden City train station, so I'm just going to keep going till, I was going to say till it gets dark, it may, it may go on longer than that. Right. So, I've been warned, this is a permissive path through an active quarry. Danger, stop like this in caution, proceed with care. And that is the way ahead. I have to say, this is one of the least appealing footpaths I think I've been along. I mean, look at this. It's lined with these concrete plinths. Indiana Jones. <laughs> it's bizarre. Imagine if they all just toppled in now. Wow, and this is beautiful. Leading on. Don't really know where I'm going. I think I'm going towards Letty Green, but basically I'm heading in the direction of Welling Garden City now. That's my only option. This is just 
just in the woods off the path, a little pipe, GmbH. It often means it's an access to some sort of underground pipe. But if you know, I'd like to pop a comment. So this footpath should hopefully take me more in the direction of uh, Welling Garden City. It's kind of been a zigzag route. I think that's why it's been so long. Again, this was a field full of rabbits hopping around as I came through the gate. This tunnel of light. This bridleway should deliver me right to the edge of Welling Garden City. Which will be a magical moment, I think. And I just... Uh, Stub my toe, <laughs> just stub my toe on that top step. I'm only just now realizing how much it hurt. Well, in Gunsey, three and a half miles. I can do that. 24 miles down, I can do another three and a half. Wow, that's really beautiful. Looking north here from the uh, Bride Away. Of course, the irony of this walk today is that um, originally I was going to walk from uh, Epping to Chelmsford, and I thought, oh, I'm not sure I want to walk that far today. So I saw this and I thought, oh, that's roughly 14 miles. It's turned into an absolute epic, hasn't it? As suspected, this is uh, built along the route of a Victorian branch line. And this here, I think, was one of the stations. It was uh, Hartford to uh, Dunstable, I think, or Luton. It did say back there, and I've already forgotten. It's a lovely thought of a little steam train trundling along this track. It's three and a half miles back there, now it's three miles. Come on. Give me a break, <laughs> which I did kill me. Oh well. Can't all be green lanes and hollow ways. Sometimes it's got to be dirty concrete underpasses. Well, I am literally walking into the sunset here. Sunset at the end of this little lane. So I'm leaving the Bride Away now, the old railway, coming out onto the edge of Welling Garden City. A very special place, Welling Garden City. I'm praying for a proper footpath here. Look, it's still saying three miles <laughs> to Welling Garden City Town Centre. It's forever three miles. How can that be? That makes no sense. Let's hope it's wrong. Well, it's about to get dark. And I've got to walk, I don't know, about two miles now across Welling Garden City. This is a fine city, Welling Garden City. Ebenezer Howard's Garden City. His utopian dreams. But uh, I won't be doing it justice in this video, so now it's just the trudge to the station. It's got a nice feel to it, Welling Garden City. Good place to end a walk. Oh. That's a nice name for an area of a city. Swallowfields. Beautiful sky to finish us off. Wow, what an incredible building. Just here near Welling Garden City Station. Man, what a walk. What a walk. 
Thanks for coming with me. I, uh, I really feel like I do walk with you when I do these walks. I don't feel like I'm walking alone at all. I feel like you're all here with me, which I know sounds a bit weird, but that's the way it is. And thanks for sticking through to the end of this video. So just crossing the bridge to the station, 28.6 miles. Bloody hell. And that's the end of the walk up there.